We're talking about the Church of Nativity and we've been visiting the cave of birth. And then the previous church was built over the cave of birth. In 325 AD, Queen Helena, the mother of Emperor Constantine, she built up the first octangular church that was surrounded the cave of birth. So we already know where it is. Basically, the previous one it used to be just surrounded like the main altar over here. It used to be a little bit smaller than the existing one. But that church was completely destroyed somehow by Samaritans around 529 AD, probably according to the revolt was destroyed, covered a little bit with dust. Most of the thing used to be like disappeared over here, covered up with dust. Until another emperor came here called Justinianus or Justinian and he built up the existing church in 540 AD from 540 till today, no one destroyed it. And that's why we're talking about the oldest active church in the Holy Land, not like any other churches in the Holy Land that been destroyed, even the Holy Supper. 612, around 612 to 614 Persians, they attacked the Holy Land with a huge revolt and they destroyed every single church. Reaching the Church of Nativity, they didn't touch it. It used to be protected for some reason and no one touched this church. Why do you think Persians, they didn't destroy it? Any idea? <laughs> According to the three wise men, one of the wise men is a Persian. So Persians, when they came into the Holy Land, and especially in the city of Bethlehem, they have seen at the top of this church the mosaics that show us the three wise men, which is not existing anymore. They recognized their king, and according to that, probably they left it. They thought it's something belongs to them. You know, they didn't believe in God back then, and that's why they left it as it is. So they were confused why it's here, and they knew that it's a church. So they left it and were lucky to have the oldest part. Many things used to be remodeled by time. So if you look into a few things that's happening here, especially at the Crusader time, 1169, we're going to see the gold plated mosaics that return back to 1169 AD, and that's part of that kind of modeling this church. Back then it used to be for the whole wall over here, and even in the back side of that wall it used to be the tree of generation, and into the left part was full of mosaics. And only about five years ago we discovered that it's a gold plated, by the way. Before that, we're talking about a very dark um, mosaics because the church were using oil lamps, they were using like, fire, incense, knives. We're talking about uh, 900 years, about 8 to 900 years, so it used to be smoke covered up with this. Even the pillars, we have 44 Corinthian pillars that's holding this church. 20 of these pillars got iconic paints, which is, by the way, wax paint that returned back to the Crusader time, which is around the same time, the year 1169. You can see for some sands working, we're supporting the Church of Nativity, and that's still existing in a very good condition. So imagine these pillars used to be like covered with smoke. They recovered that, they cleaned it up, and they noticed that there's a few more graffitis that you're gonna see it over there, which is nowadays part of history. That's why they didn't clean it up. Okay. So what happened after that? They continued down to the main floor. By the way, the main floor, all the wooden panel is open, so we're gonna see part of it here. If you join me in this part. Again, we're going to see part of the original mosaics here. Sorry. So this is the main floor that returned back to Queen Helena, and that used to be the main level back then. When the church destroyed was covered with dust, they raised up the floor and they built up the second church. So that's why they didn't even excavate back then. By chance, we discovered this around 1938 when small earthquake hit the city of Bethlehem some cracks in the floor they notice that there's something underneath they start excavating the floor until then a couple of square meter here there and they recover part of it so it used to be for those who had the chance or, or google some old photos it used to be like open couple of square meters here in the middle there and in the left after and that's it so italians they came here in a very huge project wait 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 the italians italians we got some italian with us. Yeah. tell him that that all right, tell him that story, it's important for me. Yes, 2013, they came in a very huge project here, starts renovating and fixing the roof. Existing roof, it's a donation from King Edward IV. He donated to the church, and by the way, it's a cedar wood from Lebanon. They fixed that, continue recovering that kind of mosaics, they cleaned it up, they recovered the gold plated, they discovered the last angel here, it was painted with white. They continue down to the pillars and then to the floor as the last phase over here and they recover the main floor. You can see the way how they carved, it looks like a carpet, 
very unique knives. And by the way, this project costs around 5 million euros. It's worth Which it. Is w why Italians? It's a good thing, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's according to the project, basically. Uh, no, fun I said. company funds by that and even the company who has the experience to do this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, because um, when we're talking about the Church of Nativity, we're talking about one of the oldest. And you have to give it for some experienced people to do these kind of things. Okay. And, and who were the experienced one? Thing. The Italian. Italian because they have patience. No, no, it's not because of because they they know what to do. I mean, that's what they have in in Rome. In they're, they're <laughs> patient. No, what he wanted to say that they did it slowly. They did it slowly. Yeah, they yeah. have a good patience. Yeah, but excellent. I, I'll tell you one more thing. When this project happened in 2013, they thought it's going to be finished in 2016. That's how they put outside in the side, and then they take out the 16, they put 17, and then 18, and then 19 wasn't done yet. So 2020 it was COVID, they say COVID, COVID two years, and then they open it 21, they done it. So that used to be, but it's one of the best projects that it's happened in that land because they make this church alive. Uh, so Zahi been here before, and he know how this church used to be dark, and you can see how it's like, it's, it's old, but it's look like, like not valuable as now. No, this now is the huge, huge difference. And, and still existing, you know, they keep it like a touch of life. You, you, uh, the, you can watch my videos of the church at um, 2018, even before. It's so clear how it used to be. Two dark pillars, dark, everything is dark. Not renovating, not shiny, not gold plated shiny. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? This one is like this. It's a very small, tiny. Yeah, but I can't believe it. He's again here. I don't want to keep you on hold, but I'd like to give you like the right uh, things around here. Please do that. This kind of uh, information around here. Friends, the Church of Nativity, as I mentioned earlier in the past, that it's an active, old, active church in the Holy Land. And basically, it's divided in between the three main denominations in the city of Bethlehem. In the middle, we can see the Iconostas, or the Iconostasias. It's the holy altar of the Greek Orthodox, which is an indoor altar. Basically, it's an altar of the icons. That's according to the Greek word, right? So that's the meaning of that. It's including a lot of icons because back then, icons were considered to be like a language. And it's kind of way of the Orthodox to present or teaching and even in their masses. So basically it's an indoor, the main or the holy of the holiest is exactly indoor, which is only the priest or head priest or archbishop can get inside there, which is there's the communion. That's according to this part. So Sunday we're not allowed to be here before they finish their mass, which is take place over this place here. And that's the way how it is in this part. The second part of this is into the left out there by the exit of that cave. Um, this is the Armenian section, why we pass by through the exit. And the Armenian are the smallest denominations in here. Uh, they came here by the time of Ottomans after they've been persecuted by the Turkish. So basically they hide it because it's part of the birthplace in the Holy Land. And they take the lead over here. So that's the left out there. And the church next door we used to be just before why that's a Roman Catholic church. The three are sharing the same cave, the cave of birth. According to that, there's something called the status quo, around 1778. And that's a place where we, it's like agreement in between them, like each and every one got their time, place to pray inside the cave of birth, share the rites, let's say. And that's what make it organized in between them. And if you come here early morning until 10 o'clock, no one's allowed to get into the cave of birth because it's closed for processions closed for like little pr prayers. 12 o'clock it will be closed soon. In 10 minutes, there's a Less than 10 minutes. From the Catholic part, they're gonna walk like monks and priests over the way, using the exit down to the cave and getting back to the other tunnel, getting through the the, the, the cave where we used to be in before a while. And that's the other part in there. So basically that's in this section and also the Armenian that's happening over here. And during the day also it starts like 12 o'clock and then 2 o'clock and then 3 o'clock. So it's organized in between them all. Every day. Every, Every day. day. It's the same thing, okay? One last thing I'd like to add about the oldest baptism font 